Good evening all, welcome to this new session. We will try to see imaging spectrum in hernias. Uh, the previous uh, 15 days I was not able to upload the video because I went as a guest speaker for APIRI conference in Eluru. So coming to this imaging in hernias, this is the no classification you will know. These are the various type of hernias you already have uh, come across in your day-to-day uh, -day practice. I will try to show some typical hernias, atypical hernias and some rare hernias. So coming to the first haze, this is a very rare entity. I think uh, most of the people may not know this entity. This is called bhag, that is brain herniation into arachnoid granulation. Here you can see, here you can see there is herniation of the brain tissue. You can see this is the herniation of the cerebellar tissue into the arachnoid granulation. So this commonly occurs, this herniation of the brain tissue into arachnoid granulation commonly occurs at the level of dural venous sinuses, calvarium, meninges, meningeal or diploic veins. If in a patient with history of pulsatile tinnitus, if there is brain herniation into arachnoid granulation, definitely gives a clinical diagnosis of benign intracranial hypertension. So whenever you see uh, this bhag in case of a patient with pulsatile tinnitus, definitely rule out benign intracranial hypertension. So remember brain herniation into arachnoid granulation is called bhag. This is the area where we can see that herniation of the brain tissue into the arachnoid granulation. Next, uh, we will try to see some atypical hernias. This is extracranial brain herniation. Here you can see there is herniation of the brain tissue through the bony defect into the scalp tissues. This was a case of uh, multifocal glioma. Or, uh, so here also you can see there is herniation of the brain tissue into the uh, through the bony defect into the scalps. So this is called extracranial brain herniation. The other entity is called nothing but uh, whenever this is a craniotomy defect and there is invagination of the brain tissue. So there is invagination of the brain tissue through the craniotomy defect. Here you can see this is the craniotomy defect and the invagination of the brain tissue. This is nothing but called paradoxical hernia or sinking skin flap syndrome. So this is paradoxical hernia. There is inward displacement of the brain tissue. Here this is outward displacement of the brain tissue and this is inward displacement of the brain tissue through the craniotomy defects. Next. Um, Next, we will try to see lung herniation. This was a case of uh, previous history of trauma. So the, you can see there is a lung tissue is herniating through the intercostal defect between the ribs into the adjacent chest wall. So this is nothing but lung herniation. Here also there is other case where you can see there is lung herniation through the intercostal defect that between the ribs into the adjacent chest wall. So this is called intercostal lung herniation. Here this is other case where you can see there is herniation of the heart. So the complete heart is displacement to the left side. This was a case of a pleuro left sided pneumonectomy after the correction you can see the heart is in the normal position here also see you can see there is compression of the right pulmonary artery by the uh, pericardium so whenever there is a defect in the pericardium the heart can herniate through the pericardial defect into the either into the right side or left side so this is called as cardiac herniation so this is the source so remember there is lung herniation and even cardiac herniation Next, this is, uh, you can see, there is herniation of the left lobe of liver into the anterior abdominal wall defect. So, this is nothing but anterior hepatic herniation. Here, you can see this is anterior hepatic herniation. Uh, thanks to Dr. Samir Katale for contributing this case. Here also, you can see this is, there is abdominal wall defect and there is herniation of the gallbladder with calculus into the, and into the subcutaneous tissues. So, this is called as gallbladder herniation. So, this is anterior hepatic, this is hepatic herniation, this is gallbladder herniation. Next, you can see there is a retrocardiac density with air fluid levels. Here also you can see there is air fluid levels in the retrocardiac region. Here you can see there is stomach which is herniating into the thorax in the paraesophageal location. So this is a rolling paraesophageal hiatus hernia. Next, we will try to see some internal hernias. Here you can see there is a sac of bowel loops, abnormal bowel loops, sac of bowel loops in the on the left side of the left side of the abdomen, with anterior to the kidney. So this is nothing but left paradiodinal hernia. This left paradinal hernia commonly occurs through phosa of Lanzert. So this through the phosa of Lanzert, the small bowel loops herniate and this is nothing but commonly called as left paradinal hernia. Here you can see there is abnormal sac of bowel loops on the right side. This is the jejunal loops which is posterior lateral to the supermesentric vein and this is the arrow. These arrows uh, depict the right colic artery and vein. So this was a case of right paradinal hernia. This right paradinal hernia usually occurs through phosa of Waldair. So remember uh, left paradinal hernia that is phosa of land, Lanzert and right paradinal hernia through the phosa of Waldair. These are two internal hernias. 
Next commonly we can see this is the small bowel loop herniating through the umbilical region. This is umbilical hernia with few dilatation of the small bowel loops. Here also you can see there is herniation of the bowel loop through the umbilical defect with but here you can see the enhancement of the bowel loop which is herniated is not similar to the enhancement of the bowel loop which is there in the abdomen and there is narrow pedicle and there is crowding of vessels. So this was a case of strangulated umbilical hernia. This is the normal umbilical hernia. This is a strangulated umbilical hernia. Here also you can see there is soft tissue lesion in the interabdominal wall which mimics hernia. But after giving contrast you can see this is the enhancement of this lesion is similar to the enhancement of the multiple collaterals and there is splenomegaly. So this was a case of portal hypertension and this is nothing but recanalized paramedical vein which is mimicking umbilical hernia. Next you can see this is the incarcerated laparoscopic port site hernia. This is incarcerated laparoscopic port site hernia. And here you can see there is a herniation of the bowel loops into the thorax. This is the defect in the diaphragm. And there is you can see abrupt cut off of the vessels at the level of diaphragmatic defect. This was a case of incarcerated diaphragmatic hernia. Next spigalian hernias you already know that is a herniation of the bowel loops through the spigalian fascia between the rectus abdominis and transverse abdominis muscle. This is the spigalian hernia on the right side. This is the spigalian hernia on the left side on MRI. Here also you can see there is spigalian hernia on the left side but here you can see there is abnormal enhancement and adjacent fat stranding with dilated bowel loops inside the abdomen. This was a case of strangulated obstructed spigalian hernia. Next we will see, try to see lumbar hernias. Here you can see there is herniation of the fat through the superior lumbar triangle. This is the superior lumbar triangle and herniation of the fat. So this is nothing but superior lumbar hernia or Grinfeld's Leshaft hernia. Other hernia is inferior lumbar hernia where the fat, uh, fat or other intra-abdominal contents can herniate through the inferior lumbar triangle called as petit hernia. So pause the slide and see the boundaries. This is superior lumbar triangle. The green shaft, left shaft, hernia, inferior lumbar triangle boundaries where you can see lumbar uh, petit hernia. Next you can see here you can see there is bilateral inguinal hernias but here you can see the part of the bladder is herniating into the, he is herniating into the right inguinal region. This is that part of the bladder herniating in the right inguinal region. So this is nothing but called as inguinal bladder hernia. On IVP you can see this is the herniation of the bladder into the right inguinal region. So remember inguinal bladder hernia and close differential will be uh, uh, urinary bladder diverticulum. Next here you can see there is appendix. Appendix is visualized in the right inguinal hernia which is called as amyand hernia. Here you can see this is the appendix herniating into the right inguinal region which is called as amyand hernia. Next close uh, counterpart is digaren goat hernia where you can see there is herniation of the appendix into the femoral region. Herniation of the appendix in the femoral region is called as Dagaran goat hernia. Dagaran goat hernia. Next, what are canal of neck hernias? Here you can see there is herniation of the ovary with follicles along the pedicle into the uh, inguinal region or labia majora region. So this is nothing but nothing but called as canal of neck hernias, where the contents will be directly communicating with the peritoneal cavity. In this case, this was an ovary, and uh, color Doppler and power Doppler should be seen to rule out possibility of ovarian torsion in such cases. Next here you can see there is uh, herniation of the small bowel loop between the obturator internus and pectinus muscle. This is called as obturator hernia. Here also there is obturator hernia but there is uh, obstruction. So this is bowel obstruction due to left sided obturator hernia. Next we can see this is sciatic hernia where you can see there is herniation of the fat through the sciatic uh, foramen. And here also you can see there is sciatic hernia with small bowel obstruction and even ascites. Here there is other case where you can see this is a ureter. This is the gluteal region where you can see this is the bowel loop and the ureter in the gluteal region. So this is the ureter which is herniating through the sciatic foramen. This is after the transvaginal reduction you can see the ureter has been completely repositioned. So this was a case of a uretrosciatic hernia. Next these are the different uh, spectrum of cases we have already seen. That is uh, brain herniation into arachnoid granulations. This is extracranial brain herniation. This is intercostal lung herniation. This is cardiac herniation onto left side. This is hepatic herniation. This is gallbladder wall hernia, gallbladder herniation. This is strangulated obstructed uh, umbilical hernia. This is um, uh, un inguinal bladder hernia. This is obturator hernia. This is strangulated obstructed spigalian hernia. And this is uretrosciatic hernias. You can follow all my, these are all the links you can follow. For Radio Janice please subscribe and share. Thank you all.